Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and my guest today is Imogen Ragon, an Alexander Technique teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. And we're going to talk today about how the Alexander Technique and more generally the uh, discoveries of F. Matthias Alexander uh, are a perfect um, process to engage in, to learn, uh, during this period of self-imposed long homestays due to the virus. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, um, we're, we're going to just discuss some, get, talk about some reasons why this might be a perfect time for you to explore this method. So uh, Imogen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. I'm very pleased to be having this conversation with you. Well, it's a, it's, it's a pleasure. It's been a while since we've done a podcast. It has. It's it about has. time. <laughs> right. So would you like to lead off in just giving our listeners a brief definition or description of the techniques so they know what we're talking about? And, and I'll add my own after you've done yours so they have perhaps two slightly different perspectives on it. Sure. And I think the way I often define it is actually particularly pertinent. But uh, so a way of thinking of the Alexander technique it's a, is that it's a way of learning how to shift your awareness and your thinking to help you reduce stress and excess tension and be more at ease in your body. Yes, I, I like that definition. And I, I would I would perhaps an extension of it is the Alexander Technique could be considered a form of mindfulness where, where, where the topic of or the, the thing you're being mindful about is you and, and in particular how you do things. And um, so it's a very extremely practical form of mindfulness and yeah. the, the benefits uh, can appear pretty, pretty rapidly. So I guess that would be my general take on it for this conversation. And yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought if it's okay with you, I would start with a reason why I think now is a good time for someone to study the technique. And, uh, okay. Which is that one of the things you certainly see all the time on YouTube and in the papers is a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands. And there are all sorts of... Um, suggestions for using that time do exercising perhaps learning a new language um who knows all sorts of projects that you could take on while you're at home and they're all useful but i think uh the alexander technique and as i said the discoveries of f matthias alexander are it would be an incredible project to take on right now because precisely because people have a lot more time on their hands and they don't have as many time demands on them. And that is the perfect um, sort of laboratory situation to explore Alexander's discoveries. So that, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's my sort of first thought on it. Yeah, and my thought around that is, yes, absolutely. Although I think there are a few people who are um, feeling a little inundated by online meetings <laughs> suddenly. Um, right. But the other piece is that um, when you learn the Alexander Technique and can apply some of the principles, it will help any of the other learning or activities you do so it will have this other knock-on effect to help you as you do these new exercise programs and live in this new um ch ever-changing sort of reality of what we can and cannot do yes uh, absolutely the the the, t the um the, the alexander technique is not about so much what you're doing but how you're doing it so yeah. the what you're doing could be just ordinary activities around the house, chopping vegetables, climbing stairs, lifting your your uh, children up or, ba or a baby up off mm -hmm. the, the 
you know, where they're lying and just ordinary activities. But if you do decide to take on a new activity, perhaps some yoga at home or Pilates, whatever, <coughs> excuse me, the Alexander technique would be a fantastic, uh, almost like a pre, um, a pre process or a process that helps you learn other processes, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I have an, another thought around that is that um, <coughs> while we do all these um, uh, quote unquote normal activities in our life, they're in a very abnormal context um, right now. Even if it's just walking up the stairs or doing the dishes, there's this kind of overall uncertainty and anxiety about the news and the situation which will actually be adding to your stress and tension patterns as you do everything unless you have some tools like the alexander technique to help you do these things um without that excess tension in your body or with less, I should say, not without. Um, that would be a, probably an impossible ideal, but with very much less tension in your body. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's fair to say the Alexander Technique uh, has helped a lot of people uh, release background stress. And yeah. It has a reputation for that. Yeah, um, I'm actually um, thinking of, of one particular activity that we all do, hopefully, but we're doing a lot more of recently, which is washing our hands. Mm. And um, I noticed when I was doing this and starting to do it in a much more thorough and lengthy, and more frequent way, there was a sort of level of tension and stress going into it because of the reason why I'm doing it, which is, you know, um, a little bit anxious, right? We're, do right. we're doing it to prevent this this uh, virus and the spread and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I applying the Alexander technique and some of these thinking processes to, and awareness of when, while I'm doing it has totally change how I approach this activity so instead of it being um, a kind of more stress inducing even though I'm doing this good thing in terms of washing my hands um, each time I practice it I'm actually helping me now reduce my stress because I'm very conscious um, about how I'm thinking while I'm doing it so that I'm not compressing etc does that um... yeah I, I i couldn't agree more that is it's a perfect example how even the most ordinary perhaps boring uh, mundane activity that you have to do taking out the trash washing your hands sweeping the floor can be an experiment in self-awareness yes and, uh, this doesn't mean i i want to hasten to add that this is not about going around all day being self-aware and nothing of the sort. Uh, it's, it's little targeted periods where you might put your mind, not even focus your mind, but just turn your attention to something that you wouldn't normally do. But it's not anything to cling on to 24 hours a day or anything like that. It's not an unpleasant thing to do. It's kind of a, more like a, a fun experimental thing to do i would say yeah absolutely i mean and that's the other thing about washing your hands going back to that example for you know at least 20 seconds is that it can feel like an interminably long time if we're used to doing it for a shorter time and it gives us some ways to think and be curious about while you're doing it so it uh uh, reduces stress and reduces the boredom. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, um, I think that some listeners who are familiar with the Alexander Technique uh, might be a little surprised to, at this conversation because they uh, are used to the idea of Alexander lessons always being in-person lessons 
with a teacher. And obviously that's not going to be possible online. Uh, personally, I, I don't think that's a serious problem, but for all sorts of reasons. But what, what would be your, your take on that, that question? Well, I agree. You may not be able to have a traditional Alexander lesson where you get in addition to um, the kind of verbal help from your teacher, you get a hands-on, nice sort of gentle touch and guidance um, to help you release the tension and, and move your body more freely and easily. Um, if you can work with a teacher online, the benefit to me is that there can be no question that any changes that you are making to improve how you're moving or how much tension you have in your body at any given time, there's no question that that is because of you changing the way you are um, thinking and being aware um, in that moment. It's yeah, not. Yeah. It's not being um, imposed. Is not the right word for Alexander technique, but it's not being done by someone else. You know, obviously right. the words of the teacher are helping, but you can be very clear that it's your own thinking process that is is uh, making the changes for you. Absolutely, and and th that's even that's true during a lesson. During an mm -hmm. online lesson, a teacher might suggest to you to think about what you're doing in a slightly different way, and you notice an improvement. Well, it's pretty clear that improvement didn't come from the teacher's voice, per se. It came from you. So I, I agree. It's, it, it's very empowering to be yes. able to actually be in charge of yourself. You're getting some advice from an outside observer but you're really doing doing the work. And, you know, another thing um, kind of related to this in, in a way is that norm, the normal practice is you, if you have Alexander lessons, you would go to where the Alexander teacher lives, to their studio, and you'd be on their turf. And, you know, you, you might not be as comfortable as you might be in your own home where the teacher is really a visitor and the teacher is just someone you bring in for some advice, for some help, for some suggestions. Uh, he's yeah, not, yeah, know. yeah. And I like that. Um, the students I've worked with online, um, I think the fact that they are making these changes in their own environment, um, it, it's even more reinforcing. So say, for instance, I've worked with people on chopping vegetables in their own kitchen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's even more of a reminder to them when they next go to do that activity because they literally practice with their teacher right there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think there are all sorts of reasons why, <coughs> excuse me, why... Um, Right now is a good time to take Alexander lessons, um, and I would add that if you want to, if you want to kind of dip your toe in the water, you might want to start with a process called constructive rest. I'll put a link to a site that has lots of information about that. That's something you can do totally on your own. You don't need a teacher for, um, and has some pretty amazing benefits. So right. there's there's a kind of an entryway into the technique if you if you don't want to take the plunge of actually having a lesson right away. Right. Um, going back to the online sessions and benefits of those, uh, I wanted to mention one huge benefit is that you're doing this on your computer or possibly your tablet. I would suggest a phone might be a little bit small, but it's not impossible. Um, but you're actually on these this device, using this device that we're using more than ever right now. And yet you're practicing a way of being in front of this device mm -hmm. that's very 
different most likely from most people's habitual way which is scrunched tense um hunched over etc um and that can be adding to both physical tension and pain and um emotional stress and anxiety just because of our um, bodily tension and posture yeah, that's interesting. I had not thought of that. In, in a way, uh, teaching the Alexander technique online or studying it online is kind of entering into the belly of the beast for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. And I had not thought of that before, but that's mm -hmm. absolutely true because I think many people today recognize that uh, a lot of screen time if you're not using your body well, can lead to all kinds of aches and pains. And yeah, yeah. So. And I certainly, um, now more than ever, I'm kind of pacing myself with um, screen time because it's kind of all we have yeah. <laughs> in terms of yeah. our interactions. And yet this helps more than anything be able to sustain more screen time in a healthful way way yeah and anything you learn online is going to be really valuable when you emerge back into the real world yeah it's not like we weren't online much before <laughs> so, right, yeah. right yeah well uh is i'm pretty much out of ideas on this do you have anything else you want to add to this um, general idea this general conversation well i, I mean we we kind of touched on it but I, I do think that stress anxiety um, has a huge toll on our, our body or our body mind self and um, Alexander is absolutely super for helping us work with that and um, release some of those tensions that are contributing um, so perfect so, time, perfect time. Right perfect now. time. And uh, so if you're listening to this podcast and what we've talked about intrigues you, I'll put several links next to the podcast where you can learn more about the technique. You can learn uh, more about constructive rest. You can learn how to find a teacher. Um, so maybe this would be a good place to wrap it up. What do you think, Imogen? Sounds good, Robert. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you.